Welcome to Uncorked, where we bring you the latest trends, headline news, and tricks to dominate the market, all while sipping fine wine. I'm your host, Risha Garnada. Do you just like slice off the top, or how do you do that? I don't know. Oh, is there a peel? No. I don't know. Maybe I should message them and be like, how do I open your wine? <laughs> Maybe. Do you, do you have the wine opener, the One Hope one? Doesn't that look beautiful, though, guys? That looks like yeah, good. Yeah, it's so nice. Didn't cut myself. I thought Dylan was like a pro at opening yeah. these. It's like, is it like scratching out of the chalkboard? Look at that. Wow. Yes, yes. all that effort. Right there. Damn. So nice. Yeah, exactly. There we go. This show is brought to you by One Hope Winery in Napa Valley, the winery where every bottle gives back. To schedule your private tasting, visit uncorkshow.com. This is episode two, welcome. Last episode was episode one where we had Steve Tabakiera from Compass. He is the regional marketing director and we scratched the surface on marketing and having a clear uh, brand story or story for your brand and how important that is. On today's episode, we're gonna just dive a little bit further into marketing. We're gonna explore why podcasts are so important um, and how they can provide information on a bigger level. And also kind of why we're doing Uncorked to begin with. And we're also gonna dive into video marketing, uh, the why and the how. I know a lot of people dread video marketing. It is one of my favorite things. I love to coach on it. We are sitting here, so obviously the show is called Uncorked. And um, I am sitting here with a lovely bottle of wine. This is a Il Barone, is what they call it. Uh, this is from Napa Valley. It's a 2014 Cabernet Sauv, or Cab Sauvignon. Um, and uh, what's special about this, so this is from, it's, uh, it's from the Castella di Amorose in Napa Valley. And this winery, um, when I first went there, I mean, it blew my mind. It is an Italian style castle. Um, it's from the owners of Visa Tui, if you ever heard of them. Uh, but this actual bottle, um, I believe, I don't know when I purchased there. I've been there probably, I don't know, five times. And every single time I've had the honor of having the same um, guy pour wine for us. We call him John from Hoboken, just to tell you a little bit about the experience. Uh, but went to Napa Valley my first time, saw this castle, had to take a tour. The stones in it are from like 300 years ago and they're from Italy. They were actually shipped there. And the winemaker there, the, um, the guy that owns the castle, he wanted to create this whole Italian castle experience while you drink wine um, and talk about an experience. So we went into the room and we were educated on wine. We had a blast. There was always three glasses of wine in front of us. And this is one of the bottles I've taken home at one time. Um, and so one of the questions that I've gotten before as I've learned more about wine is how do you know the difference um, between a fancier wine and then maybe like a cheaper wine? So I'm letting this breathe a little bit because this is a very big red um, wine, right? And so it does need a little bit of time to breathe, tie and tannins. Um, so let me have another sip if you don't mind. And so um, Cabernets are drier and they kind of make you like, they kind of give you like a filling right here, like almost like sour grapes, but not in a bad way. The idea isn't for it to be sour. It's supposed to be more balanced. And as you let it breathe, it gets more and more balanced. And as you drink more, also surprisingly, it gets more balanced or maybe, you know, you're just drinking some more wine. So um, that's, that's uh, when I'm asked like what makes a wine really good. It's that the wine is more complex. It's that there's a lot more flavor going on. It's bolder. Um, it's, I'm, I also look at the color. So this wine here is, it's got some good legs on it. It means the alcohol content is high and it's a beautiful color. And also when you just go like this. It smells amazing. So, um, and you can pick up different notes. I think everyone's palate is, I would say different. And depending on who you're drinking wine with, what you're eating, what you're pairing it with, um, is gonna change the experience that you have with the wine. Okay, anyway, 
enough wine, visit this winery, it's fun, fun, fun. So let's dive into the future of marketing. So the future of marketing, what I'm seeing, and I'm watching a lot of people have a hard time embracing, um, really is you know podcasts and video. If you are kind of fearful of jumping out into video marketing and podcasting, I totally get it. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit of backstory um, since I have some time while I enjoy this fine bottle. Uh, so I started real estate when I was 18. My whole, um, I guess, what I had always wanted to do when I was little was be in animal care at SeaWorld or the zoo. I wanted to work with tigers and bears and dolphins and stuff. So... Um, but, but then I realized that that's, you know, I didn't actually want to do that. Um, it really wasn't a good fit for me. And um, my professor in, at my community college said, hey, you know what? You'd actually make a good realtor. I wish I knew his name and I wish I knew why he said that. Um, but what I did was say, okay, I'll look into it. I had no idea what real estate um, would do for me. I had no idea what being a realtor meant. All I knew was I saw people's faces on um, bus benches. And so I thought, okay, well, I'll check it out. I started out as an intern when I was 18, and um, I worked the front desk and then got offered a position as an assistant. And then by January of 2004, I was now 19 then, um, I had my real estate license and I started selling. And so uh, it's all I know. And as um, the years went on, I've kind of jumped around a lot. I've really followed opportunity. Um, so with that said, I just want to encourage you that as opportunity comes, um, it's, I think it's good to follow opportunity. Um, and this is one of them. Uh, this is one thing that I was with the podcast. I was absolutely terrified to actually get into. Um, when Dylan, my producer, talked to me about this, I um, said, no, I've always wanted to do one, but I have no idea how I'm going to do it. I have no idea how I'm at the time for it. Um, it just felt too big to me. Um, but I am, again, I follow opportunity. And so um, just actually exploring the idea more and looking at how can I make this happen. So anytime that you're looking at marketing your company, um, really look at how can I make this happen? thought I'd have another sip. Um, and so I, um, from when I started out in real estate, I was young, you know, working as a buyer's agent, had a couple of babies, um, started working for a company that would flip homes, became their sales manager, sold 75 homes in one of my years. Um, actually, you know, it, it was crazy. It was a crazy time in my life. From there, I thought there's got to be a better way to sell real estate. And I couldn't find one, couldn't find a company that would support me. Um, and what I mean by that is would give me the tools and the branding that I wanted. So I thought, what the, what the heck, I'll just create one. So I uh, created a company, had a, had a name dispute, had to close my company, went to go manage a, a larger uh, franchise here in San Diego and did that for about a year. And as I was managing agents, um, that's really where I was able to learn more about real estate, um, even though I had already been doing it for so, been doing it for, done it for so many years. Oh my gosh, um, been doing it for so many years. Um, it actually helped me uh, refine my tools even more. And so the reason why I even go into all of that is because when you're following opportunity and when you're trying new things that fall within the realm of what you're doing, um, you're able to learn more and just grow your resume. And so from being a manager, I decided that I was best with my clients. I loved working with my actual clients. I love working with agents too, but I felt being a full-time realtor, I could also still help out my friends um, that are in the real estate field. And so I continue to do that um, just for fun. I, I get together with other agents and, and we do lots of brainstorming and um, and that's all, that's all fun. But I'm able to actually have the time to sell real estate um, full time and work with my friends, family, past clients, and um, and really take everything that I've learned in my 16 years to do this. Um, and I will say that marketing is the the biggest thing that I've learned and that I've refined to be able to offer that to my clients. Um, you really want to stand out with marketing. So with all of that said, it's just to encourage you to step out. Um, actually take, take the risks, do the things that um, are exciting to you 
when you are trying to stand out as a company or as a service provider or selling your products, it is crucial to be able to communicate your personality. It's crucial to be able to really make it clear on what it is that you're offering the consumers. Uh, so I think that a podcast, if we just start with, a, with podcasts, that's a way for people to really hear a lot of information, take in a lot of information and hear that you are the expert in that field and be able to um, learn, learn from you. And so it's a really great coaching platform. I've been wanting to do a podcast for a while now. And I think the idea of it was just always so daunting. I am a um, full-time mom and wife and realtor. And I, I definitely call myself a marketer and brander. And I also do a lot of coaching on the side for um, others in my field. So to me, it just seemed like I had no space for this. And then uh, my lovely producer uh, mentioned it to me and getting into the podcast world if you have information to share and you really want to increase your platform. Because uh, again, there's so many ways to actually get that information out to the masses. Uh, I feel like people really get to know you when you're on camera. Um, as you can see, I love wine. So um, a lot of people actually already know that about me, but I feel like it's a good icebreaker. It's a way to really connect with people. Um, I also, I play the guitar, so that's part of my brand too. I just got a Taylor guitar. I'm gonna try and get someone from Taylor on the show. Um, I hope you're listening, no. But uh, <laughs> abs absolutely, like anything that, that sets you apart and makes you different is wonderful to have in your podcast and on your videos. Um, also, it's easier for the customer to access it and listen to it. I listen to one to three podcasts every single morning when I get ready. Um, if that doesn't tell you how long it takes me to get ready. Um, all right, video marketing. Okay, so the why in the house. I've been doing video marketing a lot longer than podcasts, and so I could probably talk a little bit more about video marketing. Um, when you are um, showcasing anything, um, it makes a bigger impact when you are looking at video versus photography. Um, even though I do believe that photography gets a lot of great attention also, uh, video marketing is the easiest way to communicate what you're selling. Um, I have some important stats for you. All right, so why videos are important for your business. Um, I've got 12 video stats. I'm gonna give you a couple of them here. So 82% of internet traffic will come from video by the year 2020. So if you're not already embracing this marketing technique, it's something that you really wanna do. You wanna get comfortable in front of the camera. You want to be able to just um, start adding it to your marketing now so that you're not that far behind because 82% of the internet traffic is gonna come from videos. That's huge. 45% uh, of people watch more than an hour of video on Facebook or YouTube each week. I want you to really think about um, if you even, if you fit in that, if you are actually more, um, if you do more than, if you watch more than an hour of video each week, I mean, I, I maybe I watch an hour a day because I even listen um, to, like I watch music videos, um, entertainment is on there. I'd rather watch Ellen um, with her little short clips on Facebook than I would watch the entire show. And so just really the, the world of actually taking in visual um, content is completely different now. And then this one's interesting here. So 1,200% videos shared on social media more than images and text combined. So that means that the shareability on a video is way, way more. We're not talking 100% more, 500, 1,000, we're talking 1,200% more. So let that sink in really. If you want your content to be shared, then um, it really should be a video and a great one and a professional one at that. 64% um, of consumers are more likely to buy a product after watching a video about it. So you probably never knew about this Castella di Amorosa Il Barone Cabernet Sauvignon until now. And so that just gives you an idea there. Um, I watch a lot of what they're doing on social media and they'll show videos of dipping this wine into the wax and having it come out and it just looks glorious. And so when you are actually watching a video about how something's made or getting an idea of um, maybe even the quality. There are so many things that are sold online and you don't get the sense of the quality until you see it in a video. All right, 9% of small businesses currently use YouTube, leaving a huge portion of the market untapped. Guys, that is huge. That means that um, 
a lot of your competition isn't even touching video marketing. And so you never wanna be that person that's looking back five years from now and going, wow, I totally missed the mark. You don't want to have other professionals with their marketing um, step ahead of you. And so um, it's definitely something to, to get started on. All right, and then lastly, last one I'll share with you is two times engagement of videos on Instagram versus on other social media platforms. So if my thought there, if you're resisting Instagram, definitely get on the um, Instagram TV channel and start throwing out your content. Get on there, get on the stories, really allow people to get to know you and really get comfortable. So, but then you ask yourself, how do I get comfortable with video? So we'll go into a little bit about that because um, in my career, I've had the honor of managing agents. Um, I've uh, opened a real estate office. I have coached agents, uh, real estate agents, on how to um, do video and sit in front of video, uh, what kind of content to create. Um, so it's it's kind of like one of my favorite little side side jobs, I would say, or side passion projects, is to help direct video. Um, even if it's just for my friends, we'll go somewhere and they want to film a video, and I'll say, I'll help them behind the scenes and direct it. And um, I would say that the number one thing to do when you are in video is to make sure that you are shining, your personality is shining. Um, sometimes when we're in video, and I'll just do it, we get kind of like, we kind of close off and we kind of, I don't even know if I can do it right now because there's a camera in front of me, but we kind of like um, frown a little bit. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. You don't want to frown. You don't want to look unapproachable. Uh, I guess unless you are unapproachable and that's probably your branding and that's, that's what you've got going, that's fine. Um, but you really want people to know who you are and you really want um, that to shine. And um, some other ways, I kind of like loosen up a little bit, you know? I don't want to be stiff, so I'll kind of just loosen up. I like listening to music. That's going to put me in a positive mood, so I'm not listening to sad music. I'm kind of like listening to happy music. And um, I just kind of lift up. And then you know what you could do if all else fails? I guess you could have a sip of wine. So I have to have a sip of wine. I work with Compass now as their realtor. Um, and the reason why I did that is because their marketing platform is absolutely insane. Their entire platform is absolutely insane. And um, I feel more spoiled than I've ever felt in my life, in my work working career. And now I'm able to do things like this and bring you guys amazing content, I hope. Well, with that said, hopefully you pulled something out of this episode. I hope you learned something. Um, last episode, we had the marketing director from Compass. This episode, it was a little bit of me and some wine knowledge. And what you have to look forward to with this podcast is uh, I will be interviewing influencers, uh, wine psalms, so get some real knowledge. Um, on how to pick out the best bottle of wine and some other amazing people in the industry. So we hope to catch you next time. Mm -hmm.